So chapter one's the way of beauty. I think you had the first question on this. Yeah, you start and then with the way of beauty. Why is this so important for you? Um, yeah, the chapters are, um, yeah, that's true. Um, let me just look here. We have the way of beauty, the way of seduction, the way of discovery, the way of the natural, the way of men, the way of women, the way of love, the way of salvation, and the way of beauty. I think because if somebody asked me in one phrase, what is the book about? What's the elevator you know, two floors, what am I saying? Elevator. elevator pitch, yeah. Yeah, I would say the book is about one thing, and that's beauty. Beauty in ourselves, beauty in women, beauty in life, beauty in art, beauty in words. You know, it's a, it's a searching, it's, a, it's seeking after beauty. So, so the book has to start with that, I think, and then end with it, I think. Well, it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whether I thought of it or not. It well, <laughs> it's had to kind of resolve. Yeah. You know, a search for like beauty. a circular thing. Yeah. Something like that. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah. So completely. it starts with the way of beauty and ends with the way of beauty. That's yeah. Cool. Interesting. All right, I'll kill the next question. I like this. There are four things I know about women. <laughs> I will tell you three. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. There's these little uh, couplets that are yeah. starting every chapter, as you notice. You know what? Because for me, like, uh, I resonate a lot with poetry, mm -hmm. and and honestly, I think to the, to me, this whole book feels like a big poem. That's what it feels like. Uh, that's kind of like um, because I think that the words themselves had to have the same ebb and flow and rhythm as the as the message contained therein. Otherwise, it's not a Otherwise, like, it's just a bunch of phrases. Yeah. And I've had editors take a look and say, come on, man, you can cut that down. It's true, you, yeah. you could, but it loses some of this, this guy's, not mine, I'm innocent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Loses yeah. some of this guy on the train. <laughs> <laughs> some of his, like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so these, these couplets, <clears throat> and what does it mean? Good question. There are four things I know about women. I will tell you three. I think it's just kind of like a mystery, what it means. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Sneaky. I like it. Well, <laughs> is there something you didn't tell us in the book? Exactly. Because um, we got a chance with all these days and having this conversation right now, you could tell us that fourth thing. Well, yeah, but it's kind of like, um, I don't know, let me, let me consider that. Let me sit in that for a while. Yeah. Let me think about that. <laughs> Interesting, huh? So you write a book about women. Yeah. And you just said that you've written a book about beauty. Yes. And you said why women, it's the greatest subject on earth, and you give explanation about, oh, so women think about women and talk about women, and men also think and talk about women as well. I, I want a more personal reason. Oh. You mean the, the correlation of beauty and women together? I mean, that's well, how the book opens, right? Yeah, well, that seems pretty clear, but I mean, like, so there are many books written, and most men are leaving their legacy of science or technology yeah. or mm -hmm. history of the Americas. Why women for you? Okay, well, for me, it's been, it's been, um, first of all, I will answer, I'll try and answer it this way, why beauty? I think that the earth, I mean, it says in here, I think, that the earth has kind of lost its, its sense of beauty, mm. like in everything. You know, it's, um, we, it used to be aesthetics, used to be the, one of the primary studies of the philosophers and, you know, uh, what is aesthetics? And, and now mm. it's like been shelved. And the whole postmodernism and stuff that is like, it's like, you know, beauty has kind of been put aside. And, and, and I think in an art way, or an architecture way, or a uh, creative way, I mean, you see it in the buildings here in Bucharest, mm -hmm. where there's, there's they, you know, a hundred years ago, they really put art into the buildings. They spent an enormous amount of expense to create the, the, the flow and feel of buildings, <clears throat> as opposed to the modern, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
what, you know, what, me being from Vancouver, where the buildings are all poker straight, glass and steel. Mm. And they resemble each other. They're all the same. Mm. And they're utilitarian. And someone could say, well, that's beautiful too, but there's, there's, it just seems like we don't build things to last and that kind of stuff. So I think beauty, speaking about an art or any of this kind of stuff, but more the message of the book, well, no, that is it. It's a book about the reclamation of beauty. Mm. And when it comes to the correlation between that and women, uh, I think that women, uh, that the earth has this masculine, non-beautiful energy. I'm not saying masculine is not beautiful, but is there's, there's a real heavy masculine, uh, aggressive energy mm. in, the, in the world. And, um, and, we, and we've lost the softening grace of the female spirit, I think, the, the balance of that. Do you so, think mm. the way you talk about architecture is also the same as something you see in men and women? Yeah. Especially yeah. women, like, yeah. almost in places, the notion of the hot woman looking yeah. very similar to each other, lacking that kind of flow and grace. Yeah, and, and you know, they can, there's guys asking, because I put, I, I don't know if you guys are there yet, but there's a phrase in here at the beginning of the book where there's a difference between hot women and beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, we get that. Yeah, we can see that. But then there's guys saying, well, wait a minute, my girlfriend is hot and she's beautiful. So they can't be both. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the, if, if all a woman is, is hot, there's nothing there that can feed the soul of a man can, you know, if, but, uh, so I mean, my girlfriend's hot <laughs> and, uh, and she's a beauty. She's yeah. a real beauty. And it's like, you want that, you know, you want to see that you're, you desire her in, in every, in every way. And, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like, but if you're, if, if a girl is just hot in the traditional modern mm. sense of what hot means, right? There's, um, there's nothing, there's no substance, there's nothing there. You say in the book, I, I find this one really interesting. So one of the big differences between hot women and beautiful women is a spirit of gratitude. Uh -huh. And I've noticed a few times, I'll give a woman a sincere compliment. And the way she reacts often tells whether she's a hot woman or a beautiful woman. Like a hot woman would be like, oh, thanks, yeah, whatever, I know. Whereas a beautiful woman, you before. You heard it before, no biggie, you want your next line. A beautiful woman, you know, her face will light up and she'll smile and she'll be ever so sweet. And she'll be really grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's true. Like, and this comes from experience, guys. This is from me talking to women. I didn't just invent this out of my head. It's like women, there, there are women that have this, this real beauty, but there's a quality about it that there's a grace in it. And I tried to write about it. Yeah. This is why the whole front of the book about beauty and women has to be this kind of poetic thing because I can't put words on it. Yeah. It, I'm trying to really tried to capture a feel of what it means because um, there's been an abundance of women that I have met who are fundamentally beautiful people mm -hmm. and um, and they radiate and they're, they're the, that feminine uh, spirit that, that, that they give to the world is just so it, it's so it breaks your heart as I wrote it mm. your beauty breaks your heart it does, and, and a guy, especially a guy who's like living in the wind and traveling, and and got, you know seeing girl after girl after girl after girl, and and a girl like that comes along, it stops him in his tracks. This is what women need to understand. Mm. I mean, women, you know, this is this is the every one of us men here have had an experience with a woman that just stops you <coughs> in everything you thought, in all your forward momentum, and like, well, there's something really beautiful here, mm. and that quality is what I try to capture here which I think the primary quality is, is gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean necessarily like, thank you for the compliment. Yeah. I mean, just the gratitude of, 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 of her place in life and living a life and gratitude for, you know, yeah. she had trouble in her past. She's yeah. here now. I don't know. And, yeah, is, I that, is, that a, is that a gratitude for, from herself? What do you mean? To the world or to herself? Is it, is it a gratitude? Ah, I, I think both, yeah. I think both. I think <coughs> gratitude is like one of the 
top qualities, top qualities, and it what, it's what makes you really, really attractive to somebody is that sense of gratitude. Um, and not, um, I don't know, it's, I'm, it's hard to write about it, guys. Yeah. I could call it grace. And what is that? What does grace mean, right? It's like, we kind of get a sense of it, right? But it's, it's more like not thank you, but just seeing the world with, it, with, with grateful eyes. Gratitude is healing and gratitude. Mm. Gratitude saves mm. others. It seems like elsewhere in the book, you talk about some men are, are takers, and other men are about sharing experiences. Yeah. And maybe it's like the mirroring of that of women. But the people that are gratitude is about sharing the experience, that grace, that, that thankfulness, that energy is a sharing energy rather than the whole woman's like, thanks, look at me, look at me. Yeah. That spirit. Exactly what it is, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a you, you receive as well as you, as you give. Right? Mm-hmm. You receive it back. Right. And, yeah. and sometimes your energy is blocked. Yeah. Like you say a compliment to a woman who, and she goes like this, um, we're talking here, can you not see it done? Right? Yeah. That, and, and you feel it here. Mm. You feel like you're, you're trying to be uh, generous, mm. and the generosity is shut down. Yeah, and it and now it now it it layers onto your life, and more and more and more of those experiences you run into that, or women run into that, they get more and more uh, pulled back and cautious. And I'm not going to be generous with my energy, my time, because I get shot down, and mm. and it perpetuates, and it stacks. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Why we're here. <laughs> I, I want to say something on this. It might be jumping ahead a couple of pages. And that's you guys have also got questions. That big piece you write about visiting Emily, and yes. you, you bring some flowers behind your back and you mm. visit this girl and, and just wonder and wonder about her house as she's getting ready. Mm. You, you say this line because there are women like her in this world, I believe. I believe in the kindness and gentleness and goodness of the female spirit, mm. yeah. which is exactly what we're talking about yeah. here in my yeah. mind. And yet I wonder, you know, this kind of gratitude and goodness and gentleness of women seems so far removed from the competitive nightclub scene that, that people yeah. often talk about. You know, you mm. go to the big cities like L.A. or any big city over the world, status and money seem to reign supreme. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of guys might be reading your book thinking never seen that kind of grace of the female spirit. What are you talking mm, right. about? All I see is, yeah. is bitchiness and... Night club. Yeah. 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 Status, obsession. Aloofness, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, I think that's why these alabaster pieces are instructive because it's, it's, it's a demonstration that there is there. That is mm. possible. And there is those moments where you can... I mean, all these alabaster pieces are, 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 are flashes in time that made this guy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy <laughs> pause <laughs> and say, wow, there's something really beautiful about this experience with this beautiful woman. Mm. But you don't get it in a nightclub. That's like, you know, nightclubs are fool's games, you know? It's like bouncing off the walls and trying to like over, you know, you can't display any kind of anything because, they tell me, we all know that. But, mm. um, but that piece about Emily, Jordan, is... Um, yeah, it's the it's uh, it, it's uh, it, it's what it is. It's like there's some there's some women that make you believe. You can have all the rejection, and believe me, I had nothing but rejection. I was massively rejected in my in my early days, and I was insecure, and lost, and jealous, and needy, and crying, and buying flowers, buying more flowers, <laughs> and then putting a note on her car, and like, you know what I mean? I was the guy yeah. hitch. I was the guy yeah. hitch. Yeah. And I did all those things, and uh, and I could be disappointed or disgusted or jaded or angry at women. I'm not, mm. and I've you know for all of the all of the you know bad things I've experienced and seen in those days. The reason I'm not is because I've seen beauty mm. in certain women, yeah. not in all. They all have the capacity for it. They all have this hidden beauty, but. Just like we all have a, a hidden beauty in us as, as masculine strength, mm. but we covered up with like trying to be cool and trying yeah. to be, uh, you know, and and not ourselves. And women do the same thing. So there's a, there's layers of conditioning and social nonsense and stuff stacked on top of that seed of, of beauty that she had as a little girl, for instance, mm. Mm. right? And it's, and it's slapped out of her or, or buried inside her. So, so this is what I'm trying to call forth in that chapter. Mm. And, 
and you called that forth from girl, from women mm. mm-hmm. by by showing your the beauty in your own masculinity. That's a good way of saying it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Lead the because way. because you know, there's a phrase coming up in the book here, which is beauty needs a witness. Yeah. And I mean, think about that. And what does it mean? Mm-hmm. But it really means that beauty arises in the presence of somebody who's seeking it. It's the way it goes. If you if you are moving through life with the eyes of like, I'm going to find beauty where I go, and it may not be, mm. but I'm sure going to look for treasure here and treasure there and treasure there. And maybe it's maybe it's a dead end. But I'm going to always look. Then uh, it's a call forth to beauty, and beauty ri- arises out of it. That's abstract, I know, mm. but it's for sure. For sure. There's a lot in this first chapter on that theme. Okay. Mm. Um, you know, when you first gave me the manuscript to this book a couple of years ago, I, I went on my bed and started reading it. And within a few pages, I had to stop and literally stay there with my mouth open for about 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah like, sure. What this all meant. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you talk about uh, the beauty song of women. Ah, yeah. And there's a line I've got here underlined. It said... Yet most women no longer believe in their beauty song. Yeah. Just mm. like most men will never learn to hear it. Yeah. And with beauty song, like hearing you now, it sounds like the song is always there in every woman. Yes. But it's these layers of disappointment or closing off or conditioning or playing the club game because it sounds mm. cool. All these layers are built on top of that beauty yeah. song until that mm. song is imperceptible both to the woman and to the world outside. Yes. They don't even hear it themselves anymore. And, and this is, the, this is the, the, the claim of the book and the claim of the call of the opening of the book, which is, is that women no longer believe in their beauty. Yeah. Right? And like they can see their hotness on a day-to-day basis. Sure. You know, we yeah. get the pictures for the Tinder profile yeah, so and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, women universally pause when they, when they see a beautiful woman arrive into a room. They, can, they recognize the difference. They can see it, and they can feel it, and, they can, and, there's, and, the, and women are, are tuned to, to you know, what the beauty looks like in women. Mm. And, uh, and a lot of it is, a, is an antagonistic view because there's like, um, a lot of women get, get jealous of that, mm. right? And so there's like... A, um, it can be a, an aggression or, or, or a, not aggression, but just kind of a distance, stay away from that girl or something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. So, um, even though they will possess that. But, you know, like, I'm not saying that women need men or to be beautiful, right? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they're not beautiful unless they're in the presence of, of men, but there's a calling forth back to their, their nature, Nature, by nature, women are fundamentally beautiful. You look at a little girl, mm. and she's sweet yeah. and kind and innocent, you know? And, uh, and, and there's something about that that gets hidden and, and, and guarded because she's been abandoned, she's been abused, she's been hurt, she's been, yeah. uh, you know, betrayed. So could you yeah. say that a beautiful woman is a woman who is still or has regained contact with her beauty song? Yes. Mm. Yes. She's listening to a different music than the rest of the world. Because when I, when I think of women and I think of the essence of beauty in women, which is in the first couple pages, it's a rhythm. I don't know how to say it. I, I mm. can't describe it in any other way. There is, I, I say it very often in the book that there's a rhythm about the land of women, the, the rhythm, and there's something in that that is, it's, it's a rocking energy. It rocks you back and forth and you can feel, you know when you're in that, in that kind of, that's what women give to the world. They're rocking you. Mm-hmm. I've never said that before, but that's cool. They kind of rock your, your soul and your mind a little bit, you know, and, and you can relax in that, in that. And it's so rare. It is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Well, I was saying before, like, how do you recognize the song of women? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I've already, I've already been listening to yeah. it a few times. It's a lullaby. It's a lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> that whole idea that beauty is a song just that mixture of beauty being seen as a visual thing mm. or a felt thing, yeah. and then you juxtapose that with music, is there's something captivating about that. Mm. And what I always wonder, especially when I hear men that come to us and say, you know, 
don't trust women and I've seen all the bad side of yeah. things with men and women. How, how do you tune into that beauty song? You know what? It's to recognize that it's, that it's there, which is, mm-hmm. which is an awareness. It's a knowing more than an awareness. But, it, but you can start with awareness. You might not know it because you've never experienced it. Right. But you can, you can choose awareness and say, okay, let's assume that that is there. There's a mm-hmm. beauty seed in women, right? There's a essence of beauty in women. I'll start from that perspective as opposed to the mistrust perspective. Mm-hmm. I will try that and I'll call it forth as I see it. I'll speak it that I'm calling that forth, that I, that I, that I want to see that, um, until you don't see it. But then you go to the next. You, you, you know, you, it's a lifelong searching for beauty in every experience. In beauty in, the, in your relationship with men and your friendships with men and beauty in your career and everything. Mm. It's like you're seeking that. I want that. If there's no music in it, if it doesn't have a musicality, that rhythm, then, then what is the point of any of it? You know, uh, you know, uh, the philosopher uh, Camus said uh, the only real important philosophical question is should you kill yourself or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if there's no beauty, why not? If there's no... Yeah. Who is it, to, you know, if, if, to, if that isn't there, if to seek and a treasure to seek and, mm. a, and a beauty to win and a, and a, and a, a princess to save since we weren't little kids. Mm. Yeah. I used to daydream of like riding on a horse and save Saving a girl. Yeah. When I was a kid, you know, yeah. like I used to, because I was in the country, raising the horses. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my dream of like saving the princess was like riding it on a horse and being cool and killing a cougar or something, you know what I mean? And saving it. <laughs> killing a bear. <laughs> With my hands. That's cool. So. You know, that whole impact of the beauty song, what <clears throat> that had on me is the way I would, it, it's like a slowing down effect like to consider just the idea that there's a beauty song in women mm. that's not just their physical appearance have me slow down a lot and think oh can I hear anything it might sound yeah. a little bit um, abstract yeah but, but is there anything I can hear if I really 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 tune in in a completely different way than ever before uh-huh. I think the whole you talk about it with, with the tango and dance we talk about it in music this kind of artistic side of life seems like a great metaphor yeah because within music there is there's variety, there's different sounds, different instruments, there's spaces between the music, oh, yeah, yeah. and it lifts your spirit up, it lifts your energy up. It's, it's a great analogy, and I think so many times as men, we look at things from the scientific thing, is like we look at things as a problem to solve, we must understand this, instead of being lost in the, the beauty and the wonder of a song, yeah. and the, the lightness and the naturalness of it. Yeah. The flow. The flow of it, the rhythm. The rhythm. There's a rhythm for sure, guys. And you can feel it, and like, I mean, I... I my, my knowledge of this is hard one. Like I, mm. you know, I spent a lot of time completely clueless <laughs> talking <laughs> to women. And, um, but you slowly start to get a sense that there's, that women are, they don't know, even know it themselves, but they are mm. life, life bringers. They're life givers. They mm. give us birth and they rebirth us. They give us a rebirth. You know, it's like, you know, I've, I've said, you know, when you make love to, to a, a, a woman of beauty, she, in a way, rebirths you. Rebirth, I can't say it. Rebirths mm. you. Yeah. She gives you a rebirth. You, you can stand on the earth again reborn because of that. That's a, as opposed to all the sex that, got, that, that, that you know, that we hook up and we jump in bed and we have sex and, oh, okay, well, let's get a pizza. You know what yeah. I mean? As opposed to the real, I don't know, there's a life-giving energy in women. And a seeker like this guy calls it forth. Not by just, not necessarily by the, you said earlier, mm. by being masculine beauty yourself, that's part of it, yeah. but also to call it forth in a, in a um, active way, yeah. by, by speaking it. Mm. This is how I see you and that's how I choose to see you. From now on, I'm going to see you like this. Going back to that rebirth idea, mm. I remember doing a salon in Boulder. So we had a whole group of guys gather together to talk about uh, the art of seduction and romance and men and women, just like we're doing right now. And there were men present and there were women present. And towards the end of the night, uh, one guy stood up and invited everyone to do a little meditation. This is bolder, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's automatic. Yeah. A little bit yeah. different way of doing uh, events and meetings and so on, but beautiful. Yeah. And... Uh, 
So we've got a whole room full of men and some women there, and the men wanted to learn more about this timeless dance. And the guy who stood up really is one of the top ladies' men that, that I've ever met. Like, just elegant and charming and heartfelt. Mm. And he, he did a little, it was like a meditation, but also a toast. And he started talking about um, giving gratitude to every single woman that you've ever slept with and just meditate on the women that, that have taken you into their beds and into their arms wow. and into their mm. hearts in your life and just spend a few moments to think about those women and give gratitude wow. to them, mm. knowing that they've opened themselves up to receive you fully and in the process they've rebirthed you and given you new life and it's something that they don't have to do, something that is a massive yeah. risk, you know, yes. biologically yeah. speaking, and they've given that to you. And can you tune in now? Have you been grateful to those women? Or have you taken them in any way for granted? And a mm. num like I can feel the hairs on my chest yeah. almost stick up. And the number of guys around that circle in that conversation that night that burst into tears, thinking wow. of the ingratitude wow. that or the taking for granted of the women that had invited them into their hearts and their homes was was just astounding. <laughs> it's as if there's so much of a cultural norm to take sex, women, love, openness for granted. Yeah. Mm. And it, that, shook, that put a shockwave into me as well to think, oof, yeah. where have I been just quick and taken what I wanted? But that is yeah. sure aligned with what we're trying to say here. That's yeah. fantastic. That guy understands it. Yeah. It's like, because it, it, we're speaking gratitude again. Mm. Mm. The essence of beauty is gratitude, right? And uh, uh, Nietzsche said that. Mm. he said I had a quote in my book about that he says like the, you know, our art the basic the essential ingredient of art is is gratitude amazing so um, yeah I think this is what we're trying to this is how the book opens how I'm just trying to spread it forth mm. in the assumption this guy's assumption is that every woman he meets is a beauty mm. and he looks for that and he calls it forth and he, and, he, and he desires it, and he lets her know, this is what I want. I want to see this beauty in you. I don't want to have a hookup. Yeah. You know, I, I, want to, I want to share an experience. It might be only for one night, but it's still a shared experience, a, 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 a mutual experience, a mutually desired experience, a mutually uh, growth, growing experience. And it might be a short time, it might be a month, it might be a lifetime. So... That's what he's looking for in, in, in the eyes and you know in the minds of every woman he meets. What that guy said. Yeah. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, for that's beautiful. All the gratitude for the women in your life who've created part of your heart. Which is beautiful. We had another guy come and see us in Medellin. So we did a big thing in Colombia. The guy came along, he's 21 or 22 years old, and he's been with a few women but never saw that beauty and read your mm. book and decided, you know what, I'm a believer in the beauty of women. Mm. Don't think I've actually seen it. Not really sure if I've seen a beautiful woman, woman or if I'm blind. Mm. But I'm going to believe and try anyway. And that's you know the perfect yeah. combination mm. you want for a guy who's who's learning to be a better lover. He comes along and and after a week or so, he said, "I found it." Wow! And and I was in bed with a woman and kind of thinking I was cool and you know my ego was feeling nicely rubbed and <laughs> yeah. here I was in bed I had my first Colombian woman and yeah I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a lover of women now you know yeah. Yeah. And, and he said and then we went to bed because we were tired and I had a really crappy pillow but she had a really beautiful like fluffy pillow mm. and she looked at me and said do you want to swap like I want to make sure you oh, wow. sleep really well mm. and he was like okay she gave him the big fluffy pillow so he could sleep really well. She took like the, the old beat up mm. flat pillow yeah. and slept on that. And he lied back on the pillow. And from one minute he went from ego, I'm a lover of women, to, to tears like streaming oh. down his face thinking, oh, wow, a woman's never cared for me that much to give up something that was rightfully hers or mm. give yeah, up yeah. her comfort in hope that I will have a better night's sleep. And it's like broke him down and opened his heart up in a second. Yeah. Don't think he's ever looked at women the same way as he ever did before. With a simple thing like a pillow. Yeah. Gratitude, it generosity. Yeah. Generosity. Yeah. It literally broke his heart. Yeah. yeah. Beauty breaks your heart. Yeah. So powerful. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And that's what, it, we're, that's what we're talking about here. There's, there's women who have that generosity of spirit. It doesn't mean they give you money and a bunch of stuff, but they have a generosity of spirit that 
and men too, um, that really make you pause and say, wow, there's something that I want to give back. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like women say to me all the time, hey, coach us. Coach us, how do we get guys? I, the only thing I can say is generosity and grace. Mm. Generosity of your, of your female gifts, your female spirit. It, it makes men pause and want to give back. There's no other way. Otherwise, yeah. it's a take. What can you, where are we going to be in five years? And, and what am I to you? And, and I said, I love you. And you hesitate for you to say, I love you back. And it's yeah. all this taking. And, right? It's, it's none of this. It, it's, just, it's, a, it's a generosity of spirit. And what you talk about there, Jordan, with that guy, she gave up her pillow. That little gesture, he'll never forget. She probably mm. wouldn't even think about it again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. When, you, when, when there's that kind of woman, you think you want her life to be great. From that, from, you want yeah. her to experience something beautiful. But, you know, that, that's what it is. Wow. Powerful. <laughs> and with the change of a pillow, he was never the same again. That's not the guy that got married to the... Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, married her. Right. <laughs> like eight months later. Oh, wow. So yeah, he was very committed for her life to be great. Oh, wow. That would be a great pillow advertising campaign. <laughs> <laughs> this pillow here can get you the woman of your dreams. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, 